We left you hanging in a recent video if we should stay in our RV and keep traveling or if we should settle down somewhere. We've made our decision. Is it the right one? Let's go down that road. people. I'm Orlean. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, faithful people. I'm Gary. And I'm Orlean. We flipped it this time. Do you notice that? <laughs> I always say it first. Anyway, yeah, we are, we've made a decision. We have been on an emotional roller coaster mm. for the last several months, primarily because of our moms, but also because of other factors that have been kind of playing into our lifestyle. So we're going to go through a little a few of those things of how things have changed for the RV life. And we're going to tell you what our decision is. We spent a big chunk of our summer and fall kind of in a triangle. We were going up to Rochester, Minnesota to my mom's. And then we go south to Montello to my mom's. And then sometimes down to our sons in Oconomowoc where we could see three of our children and grandchildren. And we would be just keep going this triangle thing all the time. And uh, we did break away a couple times. Once was to go up north and see some friends up in northern Wisconsin. That was great. And then another time was to go south to Illinois, where Gary served a church for five years. And we saw someone and took care of our third mom. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, she kind of adopted us and we kind of adopted her. So anyway, we, we took care of her for a, a week while we were down there. And it's just been this time of just being in one major area and going from one to the other and not a lot of um, exploring or things, but we did do some. And we shared some of those videos earlier and we do share a lot of things that we do on our Facebook page as well. So check that out. In a previous video, we were talking about some of the things going through our heads of what we were thinking about doing. One was to buy a, a small place, like a small house or a mobile home or something. We found a really nice mobile home park in Wisconsin, close to our kids. And it was the thought of actually settling down into it. It was like, hmm... That seems kind of drastic to be buying something right now and getting into something. Don't know if we're ready for that. Um, so then we looked at the possibility of renting. Well, then you're kind of sitting around kind of just waiting. Yeah. And how long are we waiting and what are we waiting for? One of the other things we looked at when we were thinking about maybe renting something more short term 
was the idea that if we're not serving at a church somewhere, then I guess we could get jobs, but then we wouldn't be as accessible to go and help family members if they need it. We'd have to ask for time off and things like that. We could volunteer, but then if we volunteer, we're not making any money. So it really, we really depend on the income we make in the winter time when Gary serves churches as a vacancy pastor, interim pastor during the winter months. So then we went into the idea that maybe Gary could serve a church, and then we'd at least have some income coming in besides our social security, and we would be able to support ourselves that way, and we could maybe live in a parsonage, which is church provided. But we weren't having much luck with that. We we were looking and different ones came up and then they'd be filled or they would be already taken care of by another vacancy pastor. So the problem with a vacancy for us is that it could be filled at any time. And if it was filled during the middle of the winter, we would be out of the parsonage. Yes. And, <laughs> and then it would be too be cold. cold. Too cold to move back yeah. into our home, and we'd have then we'd have to rent something, and it's a, uh, so anyway, part of the reason for our thinking on all of this is not just our moms, not just family members, but also some changes in the RV lifestyle. There have been a lot of changes since 2017 when we first started out. We're really noticing a big difference. Um, so some of the things that have changed is, first of all, top of the list, gas prices way up compared to what they were even a year ago. And that has really been kind of an ouch at the gas pumps. But also propane is going up. Prices are going up on that. And they're predicting a global shortage of propane. Now, if you saw our video on how we survived the Texas Snowmageddon last winter, uh, one of the things that really saved us was having propane. And um, because we can cook with it, we could keep our furnace going and having heat and everything else. So having a shortage on propane would be a very serious thing. We've also been concerned about being able to find places to stay on BLM land, Bureau of Land Management properties, because some of them are being closed down, along with some other places we used to stay. We just uh, tried two or three Walmarts uh, recently, and they're, no, nope, you can't stay in, in Walmart anymore. A lot of Cabela's are not allowing overnights anymore. Bass Pro Shops aren't allowing it all, uh, everywhere either. So finding the free places to boondock overnight is becoming more of an issue. And a huge reason for that simply is abuse. This, it isn't the Walmarts and the stores that are necessarily clamping down on no overnights as much as the cities they're in. And the reason for that is because people abused their, their privileges of being able to stay there. It was a very nice gesture for these stores to allow us to stay overnight, but a lot of people decided to camp out there and set up their grills and just... Leave all kinds of rubbish around yes. when they'd pack up and go. Yep, including BLM lands. They, they really abused those too, and that's why they're closing some of those. Free public land, but people have really abused them. So please, please, please clean up after yourselves and, and leave no trace that you were ever there. And, uh, and if you come across a lot of junk or whatever, pick it up after somebody else at least so that we can not have any more things taken away from us. Campgrounds have changed somewhat too because of the increase of so many RVs on the road. What, what, um, we used to be able to go to a campground and just walk up and ask for a site and they would have them. Uh, we could call ahead, there'd be some available, uh, but that's all kind of changed. Now we don't stay at resorts or things like that, but this, we're talking even about state parks and, and national parks and things too. You have to book in advance and that's because they don't want to have anything exchanging between you. But we have found some nice spots that we were able to go to that it's a self check-in, it's first come first serve, and they still exist, but you have to be watching for them. 
And otherwise, the the big thing was a lot of it started with COVID, and a lot of it um, has continued just because it's uh, short staffed and things like that too. In addition to thinking about others and how we could best help them or be of help to them, we also have to consider our health. Gary and I are in very good health. We take very good care of ourselves. We do a lot of things to stay that way. The things that we eat, the things we don't eat, the, the supplements we take and things like that, it's very important that we take good care of ourselves because we don't want to get on any medications or anything like that if we don't have to. We don't want to have health issues stop us from traveling if that's what we want to do. The idea of buying a place would have, the, one of the ideas was that we would sell our home that we've been in for four and a half years and we would fix up a van or something so we'd have, still have something to travel out to see our daughter out in Canada or see friends and family that are spread around. And so that was out there too. But it is important that we stay healthy to be able to continue to do all of that. Part of our therapy of staying healthy and having a less stressful life or a healthier lifestyle is the fact that we really crave a change of scenery. When we are in one place like the triangle that we're in most almost every summer when we go back, um, it's, it's hard because it's, we really crave seeing something different and new and we, we love traveling. In addition to the change of scenery, one of the things that's very therapeutic for us and we've, we've discovered we really, really need is the sun in the winter. We've lived most of our lives in Wisconsin. It can get very cloudy and gloomy and long days and weeks sometimes with no sunshine. And we really, really appreciate that part of our traveling south is that we do get more sun. And it's usually a little warmer, too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> and this winter, they are predicting some pretty cold weather in the Midwest. And we just didn't want to be up there for that. People have said, well, can't you stay in your RV in the wintertime in Wisconsin? No, <laughs> we don't have a four-season um, no. RV. And most really aren't built to be in that kind of cold for that length of time. Um, it raises all kinds of problems with uh, how you're going to keep everything from freezing and where you're going to get your water and where you're going to dump the necessary tanks. And Yeah. yeah. For four and a half years, this has been our home. And people, some people just don't get it. They don't understand. They, they feel sorry for us. They don't understand why we would want to live in this RV. We live in 180 square feet. We don't have any slide outs. It's 26 feet long. It's a fifth wheel. We have everything we need. We have a bedroom. We have a bathroom. We have a shower. We have a kitchen. We have a living room. We have everything we need and more. And having this, this, as our home has been a lot of memories in, that we've collected in here mm -hmm. over the time, the people we've met, the places we've been, the things we've seen that we wouldn't have otherwise. We have been very blessed through all of the traveling that we've done. Have we done enough? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We, you, you feel like you should go and you feel like you shouldn't. And we've just been struggling back and forth on this all summer and fall. We've been praying for guidance. And a little over a week ago, Gary got a phone call. We really enjoy being able to uh, settle into a place and get to know people in the congregation where I've been able to serve and we've been able to help uh, congregations work through some things as they prepare for the, the next pastor who will be coming full-time. Uh, just got a phone call 
and uh, like a week ago and we have an opportunity to serve again in a slightly warmer climate. <laughs> we are looking forward to meeting new people, working with God's people, um, going out and meeting people in the community, doing some hiking in the areas we've already we've already checked um, ahead of time to see what's there. It just seems like everything was pointing us to leave and not to stay because all the things we looked at for staying were becoming. A lot of obstacles are dead ends. So, we decided. I think so. We're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go south. It's not like we're abandoning our family. Um, I call my mom every night. I have for several years. And Gary calls his mom real often, too. I text her frequently. Yeah, so his mom texts. Yeah. yeah, my mom doesn't do that. But... We've, my mom is in an assisted living complex. She's with a lot of people that she enjoys eating with and um, doing activities with and everything. There's a lot of things she looks forward to every day there. And so we're, we're, there's family around as well with both of our parents. Um, there's, there's people that are in the area that are there to be there in a hurry. And the biggest thing that we thought about was if we have to go back for an emergency, then we have our RV in a warmer climate and we can leave it in a warmer climate without having to worry about Snowmageddon again, hopefully not. <laughs> that was a once in a 100 year storm, so hopefully it's not going to return this year. We are heading to... Texas. Again, this will be our third time in Texas and um, serving a church there. So far we've been there for Fredericksburg and Tyler and this time we're going to be down in the southeastern part of the state. So we will tell you more details as, uh, as things start to come to us for information. We're still gathering information. The district president that called Gary knows that we want to stay in our home. And so we will probably be staying in an RV park again, which was really a lot of fun last year. We met a lot of wonderful people and we're still close to all of them. And so that's kind of what we're looking at right now. We also want to say how much our YouTube channel and our Facebook page have expanded our friendship base with all of you. You know, there's a lot of people that we've met through the two, the YouTube channel and the Facebook page that we would not have met otherwise. And we've become friends. We have uh, even met up with some of them along the way and got to meet them in person. And it's just been really neat to have all of you along on our journey. I think one of the biggest things that we really gave some thought to was our health is good now. And we can travel now, but nobody's promised tomorrow. And we don't know what another year will be. Maybe in a year or so, we'll have to go off the road. We'll have to settle down somewhere. And it'll become very obvious to us when that time comes. Right? Sure. Absolutely. But we just feel that, you know, it, that the time is precious. And, and you can sit around and you can wait for things to happen. Or you can just keep living your life the way you've lived it and pray that God's going to watch over your loved ones in your absence, which he does anyway. We'll be sharing more information with you about our new location. In the meantime, we've already started our trek south. This is our first camping thing now on the road again. A little city park in Fort Madison, Iowa. Don't know if the road is going to be a problem. But once we get inside and we get a um, fan or a heater, space heater or something going, it'll, it'll drown out any noise from the highway. It's $20 a night. Just pull in and it's called Rodeo Park RV. 
and it's part of a city park and there's 10 sites first come first serve <laughs> we did not have any issues because there was nobody else here but us and there's a walking trail on the other side of the truck there so we're gonna go for a little walk the first two nights we stayed with friends in Illinois we went to one friend and stayed overnight by her and then we went to another friend and stayed by her for the night so now this is our first paid camping on our trip south and over there is the rodeo there's nothing going on tonight. Should be pretty quiet. I want to thank you for sticking with us till the end of this video. Uh, a huge, really a huge weight has been lifted off our shoulders. We've just been so troubled about this whole thing all summer. We've just been trying to deal with it and still trying to enjoy being back home. So now you just have to subscribe if you haven't yet so that you can follow along on our journey and see what's coming up in new, new places that we'll be going to. And then after you subscribe, there's a little bell. It's going to pop up. Ring the bell and you'll be notified every time new videos come up. Check out our Facebook page, Roads of Faith, for more features. And until next time, God bless. God bless.